The Center for Audit Quality presents Profession in Focus. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Profession in Focus. Today, I'm pleased to have with me Mark Sheppers, the CEO of Audit Analytics. So, Mark, thanks for being here with us. You're quite welcome. So, we're here to talk about the second edition of the Audit Committee Transparency Barometer. This is a publication that the CAQ and Audit Analytics, working jointly together, has put out for two years now. And really what it looks at is audit committee disclosures in, about, in and about their important oversight role of the external auditor. Now, Mark, you and I have talked about that's just one slice of what audit committees have to do, but it's an important slice. So um, I I'm just uh, excited to talk about it. We saw some good numbers this year. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious to get your take. Uh, why is it important for audit analytics to do this? What do you see the value in the marketplace? Well, put simply, um, we have enhanced public trust through transparency. That's one of the things that the barometer does. And we have best practices. Uh, I think it helps with best practices. It has informed decision making. Um, I think it helps with um, companies making decisions about their disclosures as well as the regulatory agencies who are considering that. And I think that there's a kind of another part to it which is it kind of crystallizes, it kind of gives confidence to companies about their disclosures. Yeah, I think the, the part about helping companies and audit committees see what others are doing is an important one. Um, you know, given our litigation environment, given the world that we live in, sometimes you don't want to be the first one to pop your head up. And so seeing, because we look at the S&P Composite 1500, you know, seeing, oh, okay, it's not just the biggest companies that are doing this. There are some smaller companies that, that are enhancing their disclosure to no ill effect and, in fact, to good effect. So I think that's, that's important. Um, so let's get drill down a little bit into some of the findings, though, because we did see some marked, market increases this year. So um, what we've seen, for instance, is one quarter of the S&P 500 companies show enhanced discussion of the considerations that the audit committee undertook in recommending the appointment of the auditor, up from 13%. Uh, we saw 16% of S&P 500 companies state explicitly their role in determining the audit firm's compensation, doubling from 8%. We saw disclosure of the criteria uh, considered when evaluating the audit firm more than tripled among mid-cap companies, uh, rising from 7 to 25 percent, and the small-cap companies increased from 15 to 22 percent. So we're still, well, there's ways to go, but, you know, doubling or tripling of these numbers is pretty impressive, I think. So what given all that data that I just kind of threw out there, what in particular stood out for you um, on the barometer this year over last? Well, I, I think that the very first thing about the, some of the dramatic increases is that you just, they're unprecedented in a way. They're, um, voluntary disclosures don't usually move in that direction. Um, and so it's a, I think it's a credit to maybe a, like a, a, a lot of different organizations, including the CAQ, in trying to advance this aspect of, of public reporting. Um, I also think it's interesting where there's little or no movement. That's where you get the idea of where the companies and the audit committees are hesitant. They're kind of waiting for guidance in a way. They're kind of, okay, we might do this, but mm, I'm not willing to stick my head out mm -hmm. quite yet. Well, what I really value about our relationship and our partnership with Audit Analytics on this is that it really is just objective data, right? We're not making judgments. Um, the report is very neutral. It just says, you know, this is what we're finding. And so it is interesting to draw conclusions, but I like that the report is just very objective and, you know, facts, just the facts, ma'am. Uh, and we appreciate our partnership with Audit Analytics and allowing us to do that. And this goes to the, kind of the question of, um, we know that there's an SEC concept release out there. We know that Commissioner White is interested in advancing the, um, what the Audit Committee does, what the disclosures are. And when you have data, when, you have, when you've pulled that all together, 
I think it's a little bit easier for the, for the regulators. And I noticed that in, um, in her conference presentation yesterday, she spent almost a third of her time talking about audit committees and their interest in advancing that. So the priorities are clear. And um, having that kind of data is, I think, very important. Um, I also think that there's a, uh, it's fairly obvious that the, um, you know, the European Commission has, has expanded the, the, well, the footprint here, the, um, what the requirements now for disclosures to audit committees has expanded dramatically or is going to next year. The expanded audit reports are going to play a role here because the audit committees are going to have to be responsible for understanding and agreeing with everything in those disclosures. So it's a, there's a, there's a bit of a changing world at the moment, mm -hmm. and um, I think the sooner we get more data, the better we'll be. I think you're right about that. Well, Mark, thanks for being with us today, and again, thank you so much for being a partner with the CAQ on this important initiative. So I'm Cindy Fernelli, and thanks to all of you for joining this edition of Profession in Focus.